All right. Well, welcome, Red Earth team. This is our Standing Tuesday conference call. Uh, my name is Matt Hamm, and I'm the co-founder of Uprint. We are a faith and personal development organization, and uh, I am just tickled to death to partner with you guys here at Red Earth. Um, and, and really the focus is to help build a more excellent culture. So uh, my role is, is multifaceted here as we partner with John and with you guys um, to provide some content and resources, not only from the sales side that we'll be crafting with John, um, but what I want to do each and every week is kind of bring some of our proprietary content to the table for you guys, kind of customized to right where you are. Uh, we work with individuals and organizations, really helping them focus on tapping into their why, kind of that purpose underneath. Uh, it includes motivation, inspiration, encouragement. We see that as a three-legged stool. Uh, if you don't, if you're missing one of them, um, you know, you, you can, you can fall over. If you just have motivation and uh, encouragement, um, ins inspiration is kind of more of a long-term game. It keeps you going and uh, motivation can be, you know, momentary and, uh, and, and encouragement is kind of walking along with you as well. So um, we're going to jump in today with uh, with this concept and and that is <clears throat> delivering on expectations and handling chaos so in a conversation earlier this week you know I was kind of getting caught up on everything that you have you guys have going on and there's so much going on and when you have an organization like this that is spread across multiple states across multiple projects um, it may seem like it can be segregated in a way but the reality is, is a lot of the same common problems are seen among the different uh, developments, the different entities. And of course, we're all human beings. And so we all have the same natural challenges, although the context might change. And so in talking with uh, John, one of the things that was kind of brought to my attention is the reality that you guys are doing incredibly well right now, that there is a lot of success. Uh, there's a lot of growth. There's a lot of opportunity. But when you grow quickly and when you have a lot of success, <clears throat> you can kind of get ahead of yourself almost. And what you find is that you have to deliver on the expectations that have been created. And if you don't, it can create a very chaotic type environment. And so, um, you know, as we were talking about that, I started really thinking through this and praying about it. And I was like, okay, what does it mean to deliver on expectations? And then how do we, the phrase used was handle chaos. And as I was uh, really processing through this, I, I want to kind of kick off with this thought is that, you know, our business and any business for that matter is built around the concept of setting and exceeding the expectations of others. You know, um, the, the, the common thing in business is you never want to overpromise and underdeliver because that jeopardizes your reputation and therefore your excellence. So if we collectively as Red Earth want to move into an uh, environment of excellence as we position ourselves as, you know, the premier sales and marketing organization for developers and builders, um, how do we begin to do that? Well, we have to under-promise and over-deliver almost, right? And, and under-promising is not a bad thing. What I'm saying is, is you've got to be honest about what it is that you're creating when you speak out an expectation. I'll never forget a couple of years ago, I was working with a mortgage company in a similar capacity. And we had, you know, 24 execs in the room and the CEO. And I said, what is the greatest challenge that you face as an organization? And the mortgage people said, getting loans closed on time. Now, you guys know that. You're in the, uh, the, the business of selling real estate. You know how that works. In fact, we probably had a lot of frustration uh, with loans not getting closed on time, so we don't get paid, et cetera. And that was their greatest challenge. And I would say one of the challenges that, that you know, I'm hearing that you guys are facing and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but it is meeting the expectations of the clients and how do we kind of manage the expectations of the clients, the builders, and, and all of that. And, and so in order to be excellent, that is something that we have to pay attention to. What promises are we making and are we able to deliver on those promises? And when you start to really unpack that, it, it really challenges us, I think, to pause and be honest with ourselves and consider what promises am I making? 
you know, with this mortgage company, they were telling their clients that they could close a loan in 30 days. And I asked them, I said, well, what is the average closing time of a loan? And they told me 32 days. And I said, well, if historically you're closing loans in 32 days, then why are you telling your customers that they can close in 30? And they all scratch their head and they go, well, I, I guess that's just what we're supposed to tell people. We're, we can close it in 30 days. And so if we're making promises to our customers out there that we can get a home built in six months, can we, in fact, get a home built in six months? I, I don't know what that is. But the, the point is, is being honest enough to understand the promises that we're making and are those plom promises, can they be delivered upon? And so... One of the things that, that goes back to something I was mentioning in last week's video, and, and I'll make sure that I send an email with you guys so you have the links to be able to watch these videos because they're kind of evergreen content. They're not going to go away because our challenges don't go away. So we continue to uh, see and revisit the same kind of scenarios. But one of the things I talked about last week was integrity. Integrity. Now, that's a big word, and, and what does it mean, and, and how do we operate by it? Well, integrity very simply is doing what you say you're going to do. So in order to build an excellent culture, we have to have integrity, top to bottom, bottom to top. You know, in the picture that I get here, think of it this way. Think of a balloon, right? You know, blow up a balloon, we got a balloon there. The balloon is a balloon until it gets a hole punched in it. And if there's even the smallest hole in a balloon, it will no longer be a balloon, right? Because the air is going to leave out of the hole. So there is no integrity in that balloon. So think of that in your businesses and think about how we engage and, and navigate relationships with our customers and with our builders. Do we have integrity top to bottom, bottom to top? Are we accurately and honestly uh, having clear communication with all parties? And, uh, and, and again, it, it's kind of a turn the mirror on us instead of, because the easy thing to do is this. When things hit the fan or things get difficult, we can blame everybody else. We can blame the builders for not being on time. We can blame the clients for all this kind of stuff. But when you begin to blame things in your life, you're automatically giving power away to those things. And so in relationships with customers and in kind of our general navigation, you cannot operate from a posture of blame because you're giving power away to that circumstance. Instead, you can ask yourself, how can I respond given these set of circumstances, you know? And, and what often happens is a lot of times, you know, if we had, um, let's say we had a, a client that, um, you know, we've, we've told something was going to be done in a certain period of time. The builders confirmed that that happened, but then the builder called and said there's a delay for whatever reason. The challenge then becomes is how do we communicate the changes along the way? You know, a lot of times when we have a something that smells, something that's starting to stink, we feel like if we push it to the side, that it'll kind of, um, you know, just resolve itself. And that never happens. And so the more we avoid the difficult conversations, the more we avoid the difficult clients, the more we avoid um, those smelly situations, they have the challenge or the opportunity to become toxic situations. And so just kind of as a highlight here, when you're, when you're navigating this idea of delivering on expectations, we have to know that our businesses are built on the concept of integrity, doing what we say we're going to do. And that is an absolute requirement of excellence. And that means that we have to, from start to finish, all the way through the process, we have to set clear expectations that we are not manipulating or being dishonest in any way so that we know we can meet on them. And when we have a hesitation that comes into the mix or a challenge, we have to clearly communicate that to all parties. And so that's a fairly simple concept um, of just, you know, basically being honest and heavy, having integrity as you navigate relationships with your clients and with your builders and everybody else involved. And um, what happens is if you tell a customer that, you know, you can build a house in eight months and you build it in sixth, then you look a lot better. And so just be very clear about the processes that are in play, um, control what you can control, and don't give the blame away to other people or situations because then you naturally lose 
um, your credibility, your reputation, and you lose the power because you can't control how other people are going to act or respond. Um, so that's kind of the first thing today. Um, the second thing that is this is I, I titled this uh, Delivering on Expectations and Handling Chaos. Now, think of it this way. Do you want to manage chaos? You know, I've heard a lot of people talk about, um, you know, anger management, right? Anger management is a terrible concept. We don't want to manage our anger. We want to be free from our anger, right? So chaos is the same way. We don't want to manage chaos. We want to remove it from our lives in every way possible. And so, you know, I think, listen, I was in real estate for, um, gosh, probably five or six years. And then I was in the insurance business for 10. I know what it's like when there is a situation that is on fire. And you've got the demands from your production. You've got your customers over here. And then you've got the, the, the whoever's providing the product or service. And it comes to a head. And what happens is, is it's a chaotic environment. Now, here's, here's kind of the, the, the mantra that I want us to focus on is we are going to choose not to enter into anyone else's stress. We are not going to enter into anyone else's stress, nor are we going to enter into anyone else's chaos. In fact, what leadership is about and what a culture of excellence is about is actually leading people out of their stress. You know, so you might have a client whose hair is on fire and a builder whose hair is on fire. And the moment that you let your hair get on fire, you entered into the stress of that situation instead of leading everyone out. Now, this is a practice that takes a lot of time. It's what we work on, folks, in one-to-one coaching and mentoring is being emotionally mature enough and emotionally stable enough to not have your uh, value and your uh, success and these things tied into uh, what other people think of you and what other people say. Instead, knowing who you are and being confident enough to lead people out of their stress instead of entering into their stress with them. You know, I've learned this the hard way. We have five kids and it's crazy around our house. Um, I, I refuse to say that it's chaotic because I don't want to speak chaos over my life. And that's actually another thing that I would tell you guys is if you speak chaos, you will live in chaos. Whatever comes out of your mouth, you give the freedom to uh, take form in your life. So if you say, I'm sick of this or I'm sick, um, I'm tired, it's not about not being honest, but it's about choosing to manage what comes out of your mouth. And one of the phrases that you print that we use is this, unless you are willing to engrave it and put it on a plaque on your wall, do not speak it over your life. Pause with me for a second. Imagine if everything that came out of your mouth were engraved in a plaque on the walls of your home. When you say, I'm sick, I'm stressed, I'm tired, this is killing me. If you imagine your life like that, and you start to manage and understand what you're speaking out of your life, you can get very off track because you're speaking out chaos. Therefore, you're giving chaos the freedom to rule and reign in your life. So um, be cautious about what you speak. But going back to uh, my concept of five kids, um, it is a um, it, it requires and demands a lot of energy uh, to to raise five small children. Our oldest is nine. Our youngest is six months old. But one of the things that I've had to learn is, you know, kids are immature and sometimes clients can be immature and sometimes coworkers can be immature and sometimes management can be immature, right? And sometimes builders can be immature. And when, when my kids start to throw a fit, I can choose not to enter into the stress with them. I can let them throw a fit, build kind of an emotional wall, not let it into my heart and just perceive it but not enter into it, and that therefore gives you authority over the situation so you don't enter into the stress of it, right? And so when it comes to managing chaos, I would challenge us not to manage chaos. In fact, let's be better about speaking chaos over what we do. 
you know, yes, there are a lot of demands. Yes, there are multiple objectives that need to happen. Yes, it can be busy, but we don't have to speak chaos. We can speak um, a peaceful authority over the situation, and we can move uh, forward instead of being buried by it. So kind of wrapping up today, um, and this is something we'll go into in video further, and I'm getting ready to open up the mic if anybody has any questions or whatnot. We'll kind of wrap up with that. But there's three things, I think, to kind of sum up this idea of how we begin to deliver on expectations and how we begin to remove chaos from our daily lives and operation, right? Number one is this. We have to learn and practice the concept of rest. Now, I'm not talking about getting more sleep at night. I'm not talking about taking midday naps. I'm talking about the posture and condition of our heart as we engage in our day. So define rest like this. It's not the absence of action. It's the absence of stress. You, me, we all were not created to live in a toxic, stressful, chaotic environment. And that's precisely why if you read the Bible and look at it, it says, do not worry, do not be afraid. Because when you live in worry and stress and anxiety and fear, it is a toxic environment for your excellence and greatness to thrive. So you have to mindfully battle against the tendency to be stressed by learning to practice rest. And so we can talk more about what that looks like, but it's about a centeredness and it's about a kind of a peaceful place of rest. And it's something we have already that we can choose rather than to engage in um, the stresses of the day. Um, the second thing that I want to kind of focus on is giving power away to your circumstances. You know, when you give power away by blaming a situation, you're basically giving that circumstance power over your life. And that's when you enter into the stress of others. And so we have to be mindful about what we're giving power to. You can say, my circumstances define me, or you can say that I am defined by who I am, and I choose how to respond to my circumstances so they don't define me. And that goes back into what we were saying earlier about what you choose to speak over your life. Don't give your circumstances or people in your life power that don't deserve it, right? And so, again, kind of wrapping all this up, the first process is learning rest. That is the absence of stress. That's a lot about how we start our day. That was what we talked about last week. The second thing is not giving power to our circumstances. And then third is this, and this is uh, clear communication. That goes back to the point on integrity. Do what it is that you say you're going to do and be very honest and upfront and clear about the expectations that you're setting. Now, if you're telling your boss, I'm going to sell five houses because you think he wants to hear that and you don't have any intention on selling five houses, that is a lack of integrity. And it's a, it's a practice and a challenge to be mindful about what it is that we're speaking over our lives and what we're allowing to begin to navigate um, our day. And so learning rest, not giving power to circumstances, and creating clear channels of communication are kind of an essential pathway to begin to deliver on expectations and remove chaos from our lives. Because listen, your excellence and greatness cannot thrive in chaos. And, um, and we were all created for more than that. Doesn't mean that there's not stressful situations, but it does mean that you have the freedom and power not to enter into the stress of those situations. But it takes practice and practice and practice as we all mature to be the best version of ourselves. And so um, kind of the role that we hope to play is provide some content like this to encourage you guys each week, then some videos to maybe dive deeper. We're here for one-to-one -one chats if anybody needs to dive into situations and uh, really just come underneath you guys and equip you to go out there and continue to be excellent um, in everything that you do so that we as a culture, um, it, 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 we have a culture of excellence because our people are excellent. So that being said, um, I'm happy to open up uh, the lines, if anybody has any questions, you can type them in the chat there, or you can unmute yourself. And if we need to dive into anything um, specifically or, or clarify anything that we discussed today. Anybody got anything? 
Hopefully nobody fell asleep at their computer or, you know. Hey, I'm here. I just got a phone call right as oh, <laughs> cool. you were finishing up. Hey, Christine. But, uh, I think it was a pocket dial, funnily enough. I was like, hello. So okay. Was, all good. All good. But, um, yeah, I love all your, um, I find it very um, comforting, just the strategies on dealing with chaos and chaotic, you know, and stress. I did get on the call a little bit late because I had to run out this morning. I'm off today, but um is it is this taped as well, Matt? So yes. The yeah, game? they'll all be taped. Yep, they'll all be taped, okay. and they'll be put on the YouTube channel so that we can, you know, go back and navigate them. Um, but you know, today was was literally just about um, the demands that we have because of the success that you guys are having. Um, it, it it really it pinches us into delivering on the expectations that we've created, and therefore the the chaos that has ensued. And so, um, yeah. kind of the the theme is how to deliver on expectations and then remove the chaos um, or not enter into the chaos, if you will. Yeah. I mean, that's just energy draining, you know, when, um, you know, if a customer calls all worked up about something, um, I had one of the customers who's building call and just, he was in a flap and he was cursing because they put up um, a railing on his porch and that was not on the picture. Right. You know? So he's in full on panic mode and yeah. So learning not to, you know, to calmly, Sure. Without getting emotionally worked up or, you know, anything like that. Well, one of the things just to, to kind of uh, piggyback on that construct there is a lot of times when that happens, um, if we're not emotionally stable enough, we take it as a personal attack against ourselves. And really then what we are doing is we are basically making it known that we're giving some level of authority or approval away to this individual to validate who we are instead of being detached emotionally uh, from the situation, you know, not that you don't want to help them or have compassion or whatever, because that's exactly what you want to do, but they don't get yeah. to define you. And so when you have enough clarity about who you are, you can enter in that situation and you can literally look at that person and say, I understand that you're upset. Let help me understand how I can help you. And you can mm -hmm. approach it very calmly, you know, and you can even ask, depending on the relationship, you say, listen, I understand you're upset and rightly so. But I'm going to ask if you'll be respectful of me, I'll be respectful of you. I'm going to be respectful of you regardless. And so I'm here to help you, and you need to allow me to do that by clearly helping me understand how I can. How I can. And, and mm -hmm. a lot of times when you take that approach, it, it de-escalates um, the situation because you come at it from maturity instead of entering into their stress. And that's a powerful tool that, you know, it takes a lot of practice, but that's what drives excellence. Yeah, and I think just the fact that if you respond calmly, you know, it, just, it does calm them down, you know, just when they see you're not entering into their drama. Well, people need to know that you, people want to know that you're for them not against them. Mm -hmm. And so when you can c take the side of advocate for your, your customers, you know, and you can say that you're yeah. for them, then that is really when you become on their team, you're on their side of the table wanting to make this right. So, um, great thoughts there, Christine, and you'll be able to, uh, to catch the replay for sure today. And, uh, great. does anybody else have any, any questions or situations or any thoughts they wanted to add before we kind of wrap up today? Awesome, Tracy. Well, listen, thank you guys for being a part of this. And I'm really excited about, you know, what it entails. And, and I want to grow this along with you guys. So I need feedback um, on what's working and where you guys are, what you're experiencing. So never hesitate at all to let me know where you are. And we'll focus in these topics uh, as best we can. And you guys keep going out there and being awesome and doing uh, great things. And just know that you've got an advocate and a resource here. If we can help in any way, just let us know. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You guys have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. All right. We'll see you. Bye-bye.